Today we're ranking the top 5 best and worst adventure mode plants in Plants vs Zombies 2. This list includes any of the plants you unlock from the adventure mode from the tutorial all the way through to modern day and all plants will be judged based on their level 1 stats. I'll also primarily be judging their usefulness in the adventure mode only since that's both the mode where you unlock them and the mode where they're designed to be used. We'll start with the number 5 worst, then number 5 best and alternate until we get to the number 1 spots. If you disagree with any of these placements, drop a comment below and tell me why. Starting out, we have a pretty abysmal plant, Intensive Carrot. Intensive Carrot is a 100 sun cost single use instant that revives a deceased plant. The main reason why it's bad is because its sun cost doesn't justify its gimmicky functionality. In order to get any value out of this plant, you need to use it on a plant that costed more than 100 sun to begin with. Otherwise, you might as well replant the plant that died in the first place. For this reason, trying to get any value out of this plant is really tough, an additional challenge that I personally certainly don't need, on top of all the crazy Plants vs Zombies challenges that I do. But there's also another game I've been really enjoying outside of Plants vs Zombies, and that's this video's sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is an epic free-to-play military combat game where you can take land, air, and sea vehicles to war against other players in action-packed battles. War Thunder is available on PlayStation, Xbox, PC, and Mac. With its stunning graphics and diverse range of realistic tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships, War Thunder completely immerses you in the experience of vehicular war. As a viewer of my channel, I'm sure you love strategy, and War Thunder has got you covered with a wide range of military technologies, such as guided missiles, smoke screens, night vision, and even massive nuclear strikes, as well as functional and aesthetic upgrades for your vehicles. War Thunder has just now received a new Alpha Strike update with a plethora of new content including Hungarian aviation as well as gameplay and visual improvements. War Thunder looks absolutely beautiful and plays as smooth as it ever has with this new update which is exemplified by the alluring new map North Holland allowing you to take your tank and aviation skills into complex urban settings. Download War Thunder for free using the link in the description. All new players and those who haven't played War Thunder in over 6 months will receive rentals for the P40E1 aircraft and M4 tank for a whole week along with unique skins for them as well as the special Eagle of Valor decorator, 100,000 silver lines, 3 premium vehicles, a premium account for a week, and more, all absolutely free. But this promotion ends soon, so download War Thunder for free right now using the link in the description. Thanks War Thunder for sponsoring this video, now let's get back to the list. The problem with using intensive carrot for only more expensive plants to try and get value is that the more expensive the plant is, the more you would want to protect it in the first place, so it's less likely to die. For example, using intensive carrot on a winter melon would save you 400 sun, but how often do zombies actually get to your winter melons? If you play like me, you place your expensive heavy hitters at the back of the lawn so they don't die to begin with. So this makes intensive carrot kind of counterintuitive. Why revive plants when you could just, well, protect them so they don't have to die? I do think that if this plant costed less sun, say 50 or so, it would be far more versatile and you could pocket more value from reviving plants that would actually be at risk of dying more often, such as close range plants like Snapdragon or Bonk Choy. A lot of the time bringing intensive carrot into the level feels like a waste of a seed slot, which is sad because I do think it has potential to be a good support plant, but oh well. At number 5 best we have Dusklobber, who's just an all around strong damage dealer. I'm ranking Dusklobber here under the assumption that it's in its boosted form. I said this before, but I prefer to rank plants individually instead of ranking them based on their synergies with other plants. But this is an exception because Dusklobber is a shadow plant, it's designed to be boosted by Moonflower. Dusklobber costs 150 sun and lobs splashing projectiles down its lane. When boosted it launches 3 of these projectiles in its lane and adjacent lanes. These 3 projectiles all splashing at once racks up damage on the zombies very quickly. And when you have a whole column of these guys, about 13 projectiles, all with their own splash damage will be launched each time they attack. Dusklobber's plant food ability is also very strong, launching explosive buds that also deal heavy splash damage. In a game where zombies are packed in dense waves, a strong splash attacker goes a long way and Dusklobber is no exception to this rule. Given what I just said about Dusklobber, you'd probably expect me to praise this plant because they're quite similar. Pepperpult is a 200 sunk cost lobbing plant that also deals splash damage. However, Pepperpult can only lob one projectile at a time and it costs more sun. But those negatives alone aren't what lands Pepperpult on this list. What makes this plant so bad is that you can barely use it to begin with. Pepperpult's seed packet takes 20 seconds to recharge. Considering most levels only last a minute or two in this game, you'll only get a few of these guys down before the level ends. 
This just makes Pepperport pretty useless at being an attacking plant. Its recharge time makes it obsolete in comparison to other similar plants such as Melonport and of course Dusklobber, which only take 5 and 10 seconds to reload respectively. And considering that sun is easy to build up quickly in this game, partially due to a plant we'll get to later, the 125 sun difference between Melonport and Pepperport really isn't too bad. Even in its home world, Frostbite Caves, Pepperport is outclassed by other plants such as Fire Pea and Hot Potato for thawing your other plants. Primal Walnut is the first, but definitely not last, Primal Plant we'll be discussing on this list. Primal Walnut is a 75 sun cost defensive wall plant that's far superior to any other wall for multiple reasons. First of all, and most obviously, it recharges stupidly quick for a defensive plant. It only has a 5 second recharge, meaning you can spam them absolutely everywhere. Let's compare this to the regular Walnut's 20 second recharge, which is the same time as Pepper Pulse. The extra 25 sun is more than worth it for this plant, considering it has the same health as a regular Walnut and gets extra protection against insta-kill attacks from zombies. Yeah, that's right. On top of the great recharge, Primal Walnut can endure attacks that no other plant can, including 3 attacks from Gargantuas. The only downside of Primal Walnut is that its plant food ability is 8% less potent than regular Walnut. But to be honest, when are you even going to notice that? A lot of you would have expected Spring Bean to be higher up on the worst plants list, but hear me out. Spring Bean is a 25 sun cost plant that bounces a zombie one tile back before taking a nap to recharge. However, in Pirate Sea, Spring Bean will do the same thing, but if there's a tile of water within a 3x3 area, it'll plunge the zombie into the water. Spring Bean is pretty abysmal in all of the other worlds apart from Pirate Seas. But, let's just say you plant one of these guys and it does basically nothing. You're only losing 25 sun, which isn't that bad. So even though he's useless in worlds apart from Pirate Seas, he could be worse. At best, bringing him into a non-Pirate Seas level is like losing a seed slot. But in Pirate Seas level, Spring Bean really shines. I mean, come on, one plant food and you can basically wipe out an entire wave. Just for Spring Bean's plant food ability in Pirate Seas alone, I couldn't bring myself to rate him any worse than number 3. And like I said, wasting 25 sun on a useless plant isn't that bad compared to what we'll get to later with more useless plants that cost even more sun. For the number 3 spot, we have a tie between, coincidentally, 3 plants. Why did I lump them all in together? Well, they do basically the same thing with some minor differences. Iceberg Lettuce freezes zombie in place, Stolia slows all zombies in a 3x3 area, and Stunion freezes all zombies ahead of it in a 2x1 area. Personally, my go-to is Stolia, but all three of these plants have their advantages and disadvantages. Iceberg Lettuce is great for the start of a level when there's only one or two zombies, so you can freeze them all repeatedly to allow you to build up your sun producers. But its lack of AoE makes it relatively useless as the level progresses. Iceberg Lettuce's plant food ability is probably the best of the three though, as it freezes every zombie on the lawn. Stolia is better for levels with large clumps of zombies, or just in the later half of most levels in the game where the zombies start to pile up. It's less effective than Iceberg Lettuce in the start of a level, but still really good. Its plant food ability is probably the worst of the three since it slows all the zombies in the lawn, which is just a straight up downgrade from Iceberg Lettuce. Stunion combines the advantages of the other two and is great for any situation, but costs sun. In general, stores are really great in Plants vs Zombies 2 to counter the fast paced levels which are designed in such a way that your progress through the level dictates when each successive wave is summoned. So a lot of the time you want to slow down the zombies to build up your defenses rather than destroy them as fast as possible. All three of these plants are great for this purpose. Fat Beat is a 150 sun cost attacking plant who emits damaging pulses in a 3x3 area encapsulating it. The only problem with this is that it basically does no damage, which makes it bad in its role by default. Fat Beat takes 5 shots to kill a regular zombie, so good luck getting any work done with it since it's basically a gloom shroom from Plants vs Zombies 1 that tickles the zombies rather than damaging them. This is all not to mention the fact that basically every zombie in Neon Mixtape Tour, the world Fat Beat is introduced in, hard counter the plant. Fat Beat can only attack zombies at close range, which is also where punk zombies kick them, glitter zombies trample them, MC zombies swing their mics and arcade zombies crush them. This is also true for a certain other plant that you'll see pretty soon later on the list. Fat Beat's plant food ability launches a larger, more powerful shockwave that hits zombies in a much larger 5 tile radius. It's alright I guess, but it often feels like it doesn't hit as many zombies as it should judging by its animation, making it feel like a really unreliable and inconsistent ability. To figure out why this is, I had a look at the Plants vs Zombies wiki and found that its plant food ability was nerfed significantly in every aspect since Fat Beat was released. Its outer damage, inner damage and radius were all nearly halved in the 4.4.1 update. 
so it's no wonder that this ability feels weaker than it should or why its animation doesn't feel consistent with the really lackluster damage. Here's a question for Popcap, out of all the plants to nerf, why Fat Beat? This plant would probably still be bottom tier without the nerf. I really have nothing nice to say about this plant, it's just so outclassed by every other attacking option in the game. I have a bit of a confession to make. Up until recently, I religiously used Twin Sunflower as my main sun producer. I think this was because I was stuck in my ways since when I first started playing the game the only sun producers were Sunflower and Twin Sunflower, but as more sun producers got added like Sunshroom and Primal Sunflower, I stayed loyal to Twin Sunflower. Eventually though, I caved and tried using Sunshroom, and I immediately noticed how much more efficient Sunshroom was. So shout out to Sunshroom, it deserves an honourable mention here. But when I tried Primal Sunflower, it was clear that this was the best sun producer out of the lot. Primal Sunflower retains original Sunflower's 1 to 1 sun ratio, that is, it costs 75 sun and produces 75 sun, where Sunflower produces and costs 50. This increase allows you to both ramp up your sun production quicker than the regular Sunflower and produce a larger amount as the level progresses. This is something that Twin Sunflower doesn't have since it costs 125 sun while it produces only 100. This can often lead to short periods in levels where you can't afford to drop another Twin Sunflower. So Primal Sunflower is the way to go here as it doesn't have that problem. Primal Sunflower's plant food is just the same as basically every other sun producer, which is nothing special, but it doesn't subtract from its usefulness. There's nothing else to really say about Primal Sunflower, it's just a really great sun producer. Now onto the number one worst and best adventure plants, starting with one you may have seen coming. Garlic is an abysmal plant, there's just no hiding it. Even in the first game, Garlic was pretty gimmicky and relied heavily on Gloom Shroom to be good. But in this game, Garlic has it much, much worse. Garlic is a 50 sun cost plant that redirects a zombie to one of the two adjacent lanes when eaten. With Gloom Shroom absent in the game, replaced by, coincidentally, the second worst plant on this list, Garlic already struggles to find its place compared to the first game. This is also largely due to the fact that so many special zombies in Plants vs Zombies 2 destroy plants without biting them. These include all the Gargantuas and, ironically, most Neon Mixtape Tour zombies despite it being its home world. So when you unlock this guy, you can barely even use him until Jurassic Marsh, which is probably the nicest world for him. But then comes Big Wave Beach in modern day with Octo Zombies, Surfers, Fishermen, All Stars, Balloon Zombies, all of which Garlic is utterly useless against. Garlic's plant food ability is also irrelevant to the point that I can barely even remember what it does. But that may just be because I barely ever use this plant. So to recap, Garlic is essentially useless for the whole game except Jurassic Marsh. And even in Jurassic Marsh, what can you even do with it? The plant it's made to synergize with is nearly as horrendous as Garlic is. Something else I haven't mentioned yet is the fact that Garlic was special in the first game for its ability to move zombies between lanes, which, correct me if I'm wrong, was completely unique to the plant. But even this has been stripped away in the second game as there are multiple new plants that do this better such as Sweet Potato and Hot Date, and they don't even need to be bitten to move the zombies. It really is a shame, but Garlic is completely obsolete in Plants vs Zombies 2. Now enough about Garlic, here comes the number one best adventure mode plant in all of Plants vs Zombies 2. Primal Potato Mine is by far the best world plant in the game. Hell, even one of the best plants in general. Primal Potato Mine is essentially a cherry bomb that, instead of exploding instantly, has a 5 second delay and can be planted on the lawn instead of being instant. It also has a 10 second faster seed recharge so you can place them more often. I would say with all this considered, Primal Potato Mine is probably better than Cherry Bomb. But wait, I haven't even mentioned the fact that it costs 50 sun. That's right, a plant that's already better than Cherry Bomb based on its stats costs 100 sun less than Cherry Bomb. And Cherry Bomb is already a top tier plant. Can you see why Primal Potato Mine is the best? In Plants vs Zombies 2, explosive plants are very important because of all the tanky and difficult zombies which they're basically a get out of jail free card for. Even one explosive plant can change the whole dynamic of a level and ease the load on your attackers and walls. Hell, if you bring a whole bunch of instants, you can beat whole levels without planting any actual attacking plants. So now that we've established that explosive plants are the best type of plant in the game, and that Primal Potato Mine is without a doubt the best one, or at least not including sediums, I hope I've made it clear about how absolutely broken this plan is. If you don't think Primal Potato Mine is good, do yourself a favor and uninstall the game right now. Okay, seriously though, if you disagreed with any of the picks in the list, leave a comment below. I don't care if you leave an angry, incoherent rambling or a well-constructed thesis on why I'm wrong, just drop your opinions down there. See you all in the next one.